Welcome to Black Love Matters, where this serves as a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. Loving each other. And find out Anna Brock and Michelle. Or Jay Z and Beyonce. Or in this episode, we're going to go with John and Betty Barfield from Barfield Companies. See, I had to, yeah, we was doing too many cele- celebrities. We had to throw some folks on here I might not necessarily heard of. Who so, you don't know who that is? Who do? They, well, I won't say Detroit, but they're from Michigan. Mm hmm. So together with his wife, Betty, John Barfield formed the first of many companies, Barfield Cleaning Company, located in Ypsilanti, Michigan, in 1954. The Barfield sold the company in 1969 to International Telephone and Telegraph Company. John went on to form and sell several additional businesses, including Barfield Building Maintenance Company, which was acquired by um, Building Maintenance Services, um, Barfield Manufacturing Company. In 1977, he incorporated the John Barfield Associates to provide technical staffing services to the big three automakers. In 81, he, um, they turned it over to his son, John, changing the name to the Bartek Group in 84. The company became one of the nation's first minority-owned and operated firms specialized in technical staffing. Today, under the leadership of the Barfield's other son, Dave, Bartek is an industry-leading professional services firm managing more than 26,000 workers daily and billing over $2.5 billion in annualized spending. Come on, Bartfields. John and Betty been day ones. Actually, she just passed away this year in April. God rest they, the dead. Yeah, absolutely. They was married for over 50 some years. Did you say b- 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 billion? Billion. Oh, yeah. I didn't say million. I said 2.5 billion. <laughs> Get money. And we talking about Jay-Z and Beyonce. Beyonce talking about one of the billion dollars in the elevator. Shit, they got 2 billion. <laughs> <laughs> 2. 2.6 billion. Why ain't nobody told us about them? And no. they in Michigan, right in Ipsy, right up the road. Right. Come on. Why they wasn't celebrating black history? What? <laughs> Please. Or why wouldn't I ain't learned about them in school? Why I ain't have a Barfield scholarship? Exactly. Come on. Be them when I grow up. Shit, we're going to email Dave. I want <laughs> talking about, hey, um, hey, bro, let me holler at you. <laughs> <laughs> let me holler at you. I heard about your mommy and your daddy. <laughs> I heard y'all did some real good stuff. But I just thought it was unique just to highlight, you know, just a couple maybe you don't hear about all the time. Mm-hmm. I just thought that was interesting. I read on them. I was like, what? Why am I just learning about them, right? Right. And they had all these companies. And I want to hear their story because it looked like they done had companies. They done sold them. They done had them. They done sold them. Yeah. I'm sure stuff went up and down. I would love to hear their story in business, right? Yeah. To know the ups and downs and what it took to get to $2.5 billion. billion Why are you stuttering? Because. Because it's different. Honey. You know, I'd bring it back it's to a different the, level uh, money. Detroit Pistons, you know, Mason in the morning when he'd be saying uh, Chauncey Billups. Oh. But like, but 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 billion. You just can't oh. say that with a straight face. Yeah, you can't say that like that's normal, honey. Mm-mm. And they brown? Exactly. Come on. All right. Who is you? I'm Nir. And I'm Nayambi. And this is episode 83, y'all. It is episode 83. Uh, it's Happy Friday. Friday. It is Friday. It's, well, every day Friday for Nayambi. Oh. What type of Nyambi am I having today? What? A great okay. Nyambi. What do you mean? What type of Nyambi? Is your living in vain? And it's, no, of course okay. not. Because up the road is eternal game. All righty now. Come on. Be sure to leave a one, two, three, four, five star rating yeah, and Shout review. out Friday, y'all. He missed it last Friday, so I know he can't wait to today. Jesus. On Apple Podcasts and Stitcher. Mm. We st- we have yet to receive a review on Stitcher yet. But <laughs> I don't good, know if folks really own Stitcher like that. Is I, Stitcher I, outdated? I don't know. The thing is, I was looking at Stitcher and and the the related the, the related uh, podcast they got on is all fucked up. So what are they? What's what is it related to? Some white shit. Oh, and I'm sure white paper hit play and was like, no, ma'am. Man, like, no, I'm not messing with this. Or do no, you know they ma'am. hate lit- they hate listen. Yeah, and that's fine too. Mm-hmm. We we'll appreciate all of that. Yeah, let me tell you what they uh, related to. The splendid table. I don't know what the fuck that is. What? Satellite Sisters, Woman World, Health and Wellness. Nope. Modern Manners, the Modern Manners guy, quicken dirty tips for Nope. It. Savage Love Cast. Maybe. Potter Sodei. Potter. Potter Sodei. Sodei. Nope. I don't know. The Nutrition uh, Nutrition Divas, Quick and Dirty Tips for Eating. Cooking. The fuck? Cooking with Caitlin. <laughs> the Sporkful. Oh, why? Why did fit guys quick and dirty tips like to slim down? How did they? I don't know. Handles on the law. I don't know what the niggas ain't listening to us on um, Stitcher. (laughs) Okay, it's all right. But anyway, follow us. 
on that Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter mm-hmm. at Black Love Matters. Remember, that's black with no K. Absolutely. Uh, you got a chicken? Of course I do. Mm-hmm. Um, more stuff that's going around. Did y'all hear about um, that never before released Zero um, Neil Hurston books coming out? I'm lit about it. No, I have not. Yeah, it's coming out. And, you know, I got a little more time on my hands, so I plan on in, engrossing myself in the literature and doing some reading. So the um, book uh, focuses on black life in America. Um, it comes out in 2018, so shortly. It's HarperCollins' book, and it's called The Story of the Last Slaved, and it's an unfinished work that tells the true story of, um, the air quote, the last known survivor of the landed slave trade that was um, illegally smuggled from Africa um, on the last, air quote again, black cargo ship to arrive to the United States um, through a series of interviews. Mm. So I'm very excited to see, you know, what that's about, what it looks like, and all that good stuff. You know, I love a good Sir O'Neill Hurston. You know, shout out to y'all for y'all don't know the, the eyes of watching God. You know, with Holly Berry and Michael Ely. Remember when they redid the movie? I think it was on OWN or somewhere. Oprah did it mm-hmm. for the folks who don't know. She's a classic. She's a legend. I plan on doing that. Also, you know, what I'm lit about. What they inducted Nina Simone into? Is it the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Mm-hmm. Did you hear that? I haven't, heard, baby. No, I haven't. You said you haven't heard anything. Shit. Why not? I haven't heard anything. I need to watch. Yes, the, the Rock and Roll one. Hall of Fame. So Nina Simone is being inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is greatly overdue. But I'm excited for her. What and took them so damn long? I don't know. Who do you do with submitting the votes? She. So I'm excited about that. I'm just celebrating Black woman magic, mm-hmm. um, all around. And lastly, remember we talked about the Cromartis? Yeah. Last episode, well, they had Terica. that other baby. Oh, um, T- Terica, Tamika, Terica, Terica, Terica. She had that baby, and they had that baby at home and in that water. But pause. I didn't know they had fourteen kids. They had fourteen. <laughs> one, Google four, it. fourteen kids between both of them. Thirteen like, plus one from previous relationships. All his, mostly his, I, half and half. I'm gonna say mostly his, honey. I want to say he got like seven kids. <laughs> Terica, could you do that? Whew. That's a black love um, story in itself, or a question. I mean, it's di- but you know what? It's different when you got money. Yeah. It's different when you got money. So you know, if he was just um, what's his name again, Ooh. Antonio from Round Away on mm-hmm. from Six Mile McNichols, he wouldn't have got it. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, he got a little money and he got this uh, for fourteen. Yeah, just take it back to the day. Hell, your parents had, I mean, brothers and sisters, uncles, you got? A lot. 12, 13, 14, 16. Mm-hmm. My dad has 11 brothers and sisters. So yeah. they just taking it back to the day. I, guess I mean, don't... but and he had this vasectomy. Like, what is going on? Something's not going on. So he had three kids after a vasectomy. Like, and the gang ain't no goddamn vasectomy. Did he said he did. Oh, you don't think he had it? <laughs> Hell no. Look, look, I'm like, Terrica, he said he had it. <laughs> <laughs> we we know people who've had kids after a vasectomy though. Yeah, I don't know about three, three, but we've known someone who've had a kid after, and everyone was completely in shock. That nigga need to get re uh, vasectomized. I told you someone when I worked at the bot store, one of the um, girls came up to you know they be telling too much of their business. It was like, yeah, that's when my husband broke up because I got pregnant after he had a vasectomy, and he thought I was cheating on him, but I wasn't. Ma'am, first of all, that's something you share at work. <laughs> and can't you just get a paternity test? Isn't that problem solved? Mm, yeah. Okay, um, that's all my check in. Other than that, I'm doing well. I'm excited for the weekend. Um, I did a little self care, so I got my hair braided. I don't know how I feel about braids. I usually I'm more of a twist girl, mm. Afro type of girl. These braids is really giving me. I don't know. What do you think, Nero? Girl around the way. What do you mean, girl around the way? You look, you look like from girl around the way. Somebody I holler at. Well, you did. Oh, well then, you won. Oh, bye. So I'm um slowly but surely doing that, figuring out um like mailing out. Um, Christmas gifts. I don't think we're going to head back to Michigan this year. So figuring all that stuff out and just doing that. But I don't have, actually, I don't have that much of a check in. That's near. I'm saying I'm always a little bit of a negative. I've been a negative Nancy the last few days. So I'm going to pass it to Nero. How did self care coming? It's coming. You picked up a hobby yet? No. Why? Why? What is the pressure? I need time. Okay. I can't get a little bit more time. Yes, you remember. I have a hobby by Monday. All righty. Or at least something I'm going to test out. And why do I got a timeline on mine? I ain't no timeline, baby. I'm just asking. Everybody pressuring me. I'll be all right. All right. Here's your living in vain. Mm-hmm. Well, is it my turn? I guess I'm doing all right. You know, carless still. <laughs> Let me tell you about this motherfucking car here. Uh-huh. First of all, I got $3,000 left to pay on my goddamn car. <laughs> and this bitch want to 
cut <laughs> and, and act the fuck up. Y'all hear me? Three thousand dollars left on my car. Come on. I was planning on paying that off in a couple more months. Yep. But. But. I get that bitch fit. So, he, what do you tell me? The rear differential. Yeah, like the axis or yeah, something like axis, that. Like, yeah, axle? Something that, Am I saying that right? Yeah. It, the rear differential is what turns or like turns the axle. So, and the thing is, since my car is a little older, ain't no junkyard got it in the area. Yeah. So, he was like, well... One of the things I might have to do is just take it apart and figure what parts are broken and just rebuild it from there. But oh that's going to get expensive. Yeah, I bet. The fuck? We hold off it. on it. We doing classic cars. You know, right. What the hell is we doing here? Yeah, hold the fuck off on that, bro. Yeah, 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 exactly. So um, I'm just looking on. You know what? eBay has a lot of car parts. <laughs> eBay has a lot of things. And I almost bought a uh, a, a car a car part from eBay. I bet you almost bought a car from eBay. Well, I was shit. like, you see, I woke the fuck up. What the hell is you talking about? <laughs> come on, Neil. Come on now. And so, I, I think I might have a solution, but y'all keep all y'all niggas with third eyes. Oh my god, leave people alone. You wasting their third no, eyes. No, no, I'm not. Shit, okay. open them bitches. Okay, Neil. Open them bitches. They are oh, open. What now. else? Uh, do you see? I heard about Keaton. We was Who? talking about Keaton. That little white boy that was uh, crying about he was getting bullied. Don't say he was crying about it. What happened? I, I know why he was getting bullied. Because he was walking around school calling black kids niggers. He, did he call them niggers? Yes. No, he didn't. That's, that's the word on the street. That's what I said. I want proof. You know, his mama racist and shit. Walking around with, well, you know, she can't be no KKK because they don't let women in KKK. Oh, Jesus. So, you know, walking around with Confederate flags and shit. So, yeah, that's when it happened. Yeah. That's the word on the street. That's the articles I done read. What? It's walking around calling black kids nigga. Yeah. Who, I wasn't even thinking it was black kids I was picking on them. Shit. Thought it was what, his white brethren. Probably we thought, but hell, you call a nigga, you get slapped in the face. <laughs> I had a white boy call me, call, not call me nigga, but say nigga in front of me one time in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. And I almost beat his ass. What? You remember the white neighbors I had when I was an undergrad and I was over there? The one that built that deck out of yeah. nowhere. They said nigga to you? No, he said to me. Saying, they was what? talking like, you know, they was like, like, um, calling uh, a Jewish man a kike is not the equivalent to calling a black man a nigger. And I almost. What I almost, the fuck? You comfortable? I said, where the fuck this conversation come from? You, so I almost like open hand <laughs> slapped his they ass. They tried. They came around the back with you? And, you know, they, you know, evidently they didn't think I was there, but I was there. I said, hold the fuck up. I almost opened the hand and slapped that nigga. And then I was like, hold up. First of all, y'all niggas getting a little too damn comfortable. And I said that to me. Y'all niggas, y'all yeah. white niggas are getting too damn comfortable with me. Yeah. First of all, I'd be saying nigga around here freely. If freely. I hear next time I hear somebody say motherfucking nigga, yeah, it's a problem. I'm beating some asses. Oh, my God. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang, motherfucker. Oh, not chitty, chitty, bang, bang. And so... Yeah, if Keaton ass going around calling a little black kid nigga, his ass deserve to get slapped in the face. <laughs> I don't know what Keaton doing. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know what the fuck he's doing. I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to just stay in my lane. I hear you. In my, my black ass business. So, whatever. Okay. Uh, what else is going on? Other than that, just working on my other website. Mm-hmm. I'm almost done with that. You know, the magazine come out and... December 26th. Are you, counting, are you nervous? I'm, uh, I'm not necessarily nervous, nervous, but you know how I get when I'm, I'm a recovering perfectionist. Oh, my God. Yes, so, he gets on my motherfucking nerves. So, you know, I'm working on that. Um, but once I get done with my other the health and fitness site, um, Black Love Matters will be getting a, uh, getting a refresh, too. Oh, nice. I was yeah. wondering if you forget about us. No, we ain't forget about it. It's going to be all... We all fly and shit, it's, you know. What, what you mean? Well, it's fly now. You got colors and flyer. you know shit. Just gonna be whooping and everything. You said whooping. Yeah. You said you got any plans this weekend? Um, what what is going on this weekend other than working on a website? Oh lord, I got like three websites to build. So yeah, you just working. Work. Mm-hmm. That's about it. Okay. Um, that's about it. That's all I got going on. All right. Well, let's chop in some pillow talk. All right. What we got going on? So why black women always got to save the motherfucking day? What you talking about? You know what the hell I'm talking about. Doug Jones wins Bama. Oh. You knew that. Well, how many black women is in Bama before? It doesn't fucking matter. Is that we're carried to gosh darn vote, okay? Look, I couldn't even cuss on that one. So, as y'all know, Doug Jones, a Democratic former prosecutor, 
um, one against the, Recom- the Republican crazy man, Roy S. Morris, um, in a campaign. But this is the numbers I want to break down. I'm sure y'all don't seen it everywhere. 90% of black women voted for him. 92% of black men, 20% of white men, 32% of white women. What the fuck is going on? He won that race because of people of color. Yeah, he definitely did. But what what the hell is going on with the white people? Remember we had this conversation about like not all crackers are crafty. You know what I'm saying? We just mm. talking about the crafty ones. Not all niggas is nifty ones. We talking about the nifty ones. Well, these fucking numbers say that a lot of them is crafty. In Alabama. Like what what the hell is going on, right? Mm-hmm. Like I'm just curious what they were thinking to say, oh yes, we, we would rather have a pedophile racist in office than a Democrat. He's a constitutionalist, baby. What the fuck does that even mean? The constitution need to be re-edited. It's time to do some edits to that motherfucker because I don't, it just blows my mind. You know, white men, not so much because, you know, they got to protect their neck. Um, But these white women, what, sis, y'all need to have a, I think it was Funky Dineva I was watching. White people really need to have a deep conversation with themselves. Mm -hmm. They got a lot of issues going on when it comes to pedophilia, sexual assault, racism. This y'all shit. Y'all need to navigate through this shit. But I'm still on black. Here come black women to save the motherfucking day. Because who was those people who was voting? Who's the, who are the folks writing these write-in votes? Who the fuck they was writing in for? It, Obama? Like, who, what do you say who? These nuts. Like, that's another thing. What, we got to stop these write-ins. Like, what is going on? Because mm. them 1% or 2% could have made or break a lot of shit. Sure if that true. 2% would have went to Roy, he would have won. If that that would have made Doug a little bit more. Like, what is it? You know what it is? It's these soft-ass motherfuckers. It's the same motherfuckers who voted for that, uh, who was that uh, dude that fucked up everything for Hillary? Who? Which one? <sighs> That one right in motherfucker, the Green Party dude. Oh, that woman in man. That's like we don't remember yeah. that, both their names. Them both of them stupid motherfuckers. I thought you were gonna say Bernie Sanders. No, not Bernie oh. Sanders. That's, you asked who messed up for Hillary. Yeah. Well. <laughs> what? But it, it, it's <laughs> it's these type of motherfuckers that be like, well, I'm gonna use my vote, and I don't think none of them are the best candidates, so I'm just gonna stupid. write wrote, vote I'm gonna right write in. my neighbor. Yeah. Uh, fuck and you fucking it up for the rest of us. Y'all niggas need to pick a fucking side. <laughs> you silly nigga. They do. Yeah. I mean, when it comes to something this high profile, I just ain't no right in. Yeah, it ain't no right in voting. We pick ain't talking a side. about city council here. But what I will say, Doug, um, you better take this motherfucker and run with it. Because I don't well, this is in twenty five years they ain't had a Democrat. Right. So Doug, I rec Mr. Jones, I recommend you Donald Trump this. This time you're here. <laughs> Meaning go in there and just stir up all types of shit because they ain't not going to let you back in there you hear me they're not going to let you back in there so go ahead and stir up all the shit you would like down in bama in the words of donald trump congratulations doug jones on a hard fought victory the write-in votes played a very big factor but a win is a win oh he fucking tried it (laughs) i mean i said it too but yeah the people of alabama are great and the republicans will have another shot at this seat in a very very short period it never ends. Shut up. Oh, 45. 45 don't got nothing else to do. No. So I don't know. Alabama. See, stuff like that be making me second guess the South and make my ass stay up here in white ass New England, right? It's a little different. Mm-hmm. I, ooh, it'd be hard for me to live in a state where, what is it? How many? 70% of people, what, basically 70% of women and what, 80% of white people voted for him? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Like how? And my thing is to ask them. So then, what? What do you see? What aligns you with that candidate? Right? Yeah. It can't be. All this cannot be because of abortion. What else is going on? It cannot be. I don't know, Niram. What else you think? He's a constitutionalist. Niram, you don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means, but that's what the fuck the white people be saying all the damn time. So I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Nigga, a constitutionalist. Absolutely. But here, here's some other breakdown. So you got also got to think about it. So. Um, um, people under thirty, yeah, was majority for uh, what's the name okay. for Doug Jones, yeah, while uh, people who had no college degrees, oh, were touched by white hands, the mm, other white hands, honey, ninety two percent black, yeah. Uh, what else? Um, uh, people who wrote, voted for more uh, approve of Donald Trump, of course. Mm-hmm. What's the, uh, <laughs> another one? Uh, 87% disapprove of Donald Trump who voted for uh, Doug Jones. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, I, I'm happy Doug won. 
I hope he continues to move forward in this. Um, but what I will say is all the folks who voted for him in Alabama stay on his ass. A lot of times folks tend to think once you vote, you've done your due diligence. And e even once you vote and once you get the person elected in office, everything's done. But it's not. You have to stay in his ass. So you give Doug his first 30 days to get his office, his staples and his parking permit. And then Alabama folks, I want y'all in Doug's ass. What the fuck is he going to do? What are the issues y'all need in Alabama resolved? Did you say Staples? Well, you know how it is. You know how it is working for state and government. It take a month to get Staples. So once you get your Staples and your parking permit and you're done with all the red tape and you can eat your lunch and you get your, your first paycheck, be on his ass. Because I think that's where, you know, being observant from even thinking back to the Obama era to now, I think that's what's happened. So we get folks in and elected and then we're like, all right, we did our part. See you in four years. Mm -hmm. But I think we got to stay on their asses, right? Yeah. So, all right, like I said, give him a month. Give him a month to get his staff. But after that, Alabama, I don't know what y'all need. Get on some shit. Weren't they the, um, is they Alabama the fattest state or the most educated? Yeah, something they, like that. Because they said Massachusetts is the healthiest state. Mm-hmm. What? We done beat California. I know, we done beat California. We in that Massachusetts, honey. We Massachusetts black. Mm -hmm. But so that's what I would just say. For the folks who voted, Doug, you ain't out now. And don't forget your base, Doug. And you better be on this shit. Right. Nearums. That's all I got. Um, Mo fuck shit. Omarosa fired. So long. Um, Rosa, I'm gonna call her Rosa. Good um, was the only senior African American staffer, and rumors have circulated that she struggled in the administration. Duh. Good so bye. however, after Roy Moore Enough was a month, enough, um, allegedly. Apparently it may not have been the most graceful exit either. So it looks like so look, the streets is talking to say when they let um old girl go, she start shaking the tables on their asses. <laughs> Y'all remember that from Love About K Michelle? I'm shaking the tables. And so I guess they told her to get her monkey ass up out of here. And then she started showing out and it's been a wrap ever since. But the T was I think her resignation is not effective until January twentieth, two thousand eighteen. So she still got a couple more checks to get. Goodbye. Thoughts on that? It was just a matter of time to me. Yeah. What's your thoughts on Am Amarosa? Yeah. We didn't call her Amarosa. We call her Rosa. I wasn't here for her ass when her ass got there. What? Really? So, why? Because she, who she for? Herself? Exactly. Yeah. The thing is, I don't even know what the fuck her job was doing. Why the fuck she just didn't stay? Liaison in? with us, niggas. She ain't never talked to me. She won't gonna talk to you. Well, who the fuck she was gonna talk to? She Herself. She and I think you and looked in the mirror. At, I think after the first year, she thought she really was gonna be allowed to do something. Uh -huh. And then they was like, "Oh, bitch, we don't care about the niggas. No, we're, we're paying you to pretend we do. That that's how much we care about them. You and Ben go have a seat. Go, you and Ben go talk amongst yourselves. What the fuck is he doing? Who Ben Carson? Yeah, collecting a check. What? The thing is, you know, I'm not really for her, even though, you know, Issa told us to root for everyone black. So, you know, a black I'm, woman. I wasn't all against this. her getting her check. Get collect your yeah, checks. I was just saying, she can get her check, but, you know, what's she going to do now? Scare her ass back to the black community? Who was that who sent us a link of somebody? Was that Corey who sent yeah. us a link to that guy talking about her? Mm -hmm. I think that's right. Like, you know, she ain't meshed too well with the black community. So she went to the white ones and the white. What do you say? The white folks said, this is an interesting nigga. <laughs> what do you say? This is an interesting character. Right. But they only going to allow so much of that shit. And they're like, you gone. And now she, you know, she raising hell. Like, the thing is, I don't think she, like, I agree with him. I don't think she cooning or shucking and jiving. I, I think she is an asshole. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's just the game she play. Yeah. Is she a lawyer? I don't know what the fuck Amarosa was or is. Is. You can mean was. I don't but it's just, a ma she? it's just a matter of Who is of you? You know, and, but the thing is, because she a black woman, I'm being a little more easy on her. Mm -hmm. Because we done got enough trauma this year. So, sis, I know they got you out there for something dirty. You know you got in there for something dirty. Take your last check and go on a vacation about a year or so and check in with us in 18 months. So long. What? Farewell. What do you mean? So I bid you a goodbye. Nero, why do you keep singing? Are you focused? Are you yeah. Are you here with me? I'm here with you, baby. I'm just telling, telling them their farewell. Goodbye. Goodbye. Because I ain't got shit for her. Like, like you said, she was going to be a liaison for the niggas. Yeah. But she ain't doing shit for the niggas other than check, uh, being a nigga that collects a check. <laughs> so the nigga fucked up on that. You, I mean, they didn't job. even. She shit on the HBCUs. Yeah. She didn't even bring in no black kids to have lunch with the president. Well, what black kids are going on? I mean, some black kids are going Just bring them through there. A free trip to D.C. So, you know, I, goodbye. Bye. 
with her, like I said, she gonna collect a couple more checks. She gonna yeah. uh, go and hide it. Yeah, and she then, should. I recommend eighteen months. And then she gonna come back and gonna try to fuck with the black community. So you think she's going to try to come back to us? Yeah. Her and K, not K. Michelle, her and Chrisette Michelle going to try it? Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, but Chrisette making her way back. She, you know, she didn't make that Black Lives Matter. Nah. Time. Bad mood. The Chrisette, don't, I, the, sister, the only way you can do it is just apologize. Just go on a real black show and be like, I'm sorry. I apologize. I fucked up. Speaking of a real black show, I know this is a little off track. Did you hear about Tavis Smiley? Jesus. They coming for the niggas. All right. What did we tell y'all? What did we tell y'all? What they say about it? It started with Russell. I knew when they started with Russell Simmons and his ass went quiet, quiet, quiet. quiet this nigga is a yoga Buddhist. Yeah. Buddhist mm. monk eating vegan. But Russ is because black women come close to the mic. Can we always talk? Russell Simmons did come off suspect. As a woman, am mm. I the only one who got it that I wouldn't want to be alone in the room with him? But well, Russell Simmons? Mm-hmm. Also, Tavis Smiley. Did I say his name right? Yeah, Tavis. Yeah, Tavis. They getting his ass. They done took his t- PBS show off that been on forever um, because of sexual assault misconduct shit, too. What? Well, what? you know, I ain't really real fucking with Tavis since his ass. So you said he don't fuck with Obama. Yeah, that's him and who? Cornell? Mm. Who be talking that stupid shit? Yeah. Yeah. So. So, but Russell Simmons had like a book excerpt, like when they were talking about his memoir on how he's talking about how. The reason why he became a ladies man was because he was like so fascinated with him to the point where he wouldn't take no for an answer and like send him flowers every day or balloons and shit like that. Basically, he's like, you know, I basically wore them down, you know, so. Rape culture. You know, back in the day when he wrote the book, it probably would seem cool. Like, oh. So they using his receipts against him? Yeah. But now in a different context. What Kamora say? I don't know. Shit, you probably started with her. Allegedly. Because Kamora left. She said <laughs> bye-bye, and she kept the last name Simmons. Right. But, yeah, so we got him and Tavis. When I seen that with Tavis Smiley, I said, Jesus. Oh, my God. Not Tavis in that tight tone. Would you say Tavis in that tight tone? Literally. <laughs> but he he was another one that I'd be like, mm, it's something a little um, used car salesman's about you. You didn't think? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm sorry. We off topic. Um, but we still talking about the government and 45, that bullshit. Anything yeah. else about Amorosa? Um, I bid you a, a adieu. I bid you a goodbye. It don't surprise me. Like this, it don't. this is what we're talking about crafty, right? We already we all we how did we know her time was limited? Just like Chrisette Michelle, how did we know that was a stupid move? The community was telling you it was a stupid move. The thing is, Amorosa could have made um a slant towards the community if she'd be like, Donald Trump asked me to work for him and I was like, No, I can't. I respectfully decline. Right, you know, I think the, mm-hmm. the community would have gave her a little bit more props, right? Yeah. But what she did, she took her monkey ass on up there and started skinning and grinning. Well, that's what you know. And was on stage and everything. Yeah, she was the house nigga. What you expect? <sighs> what is Ben? You're right. What is Ben Carson doing? I don't know. I'm looking up now. I'm trying to find some Ben Carson. He, he over HUD, right? Yeah. You know, you really don't hear much about HUD, but let me figure out yeah, some Ben Carson, Carson news. Just, I'm just nothing, typing in ben, Carson, ben Carson. Nothing Google. comes up. Let's see. Let me go on the news tab. Ben Carson is right about one thing when it comes to homelessness. What is that one thing? Ben Carson picks Detroit to pilot new Don't federal be tra- initiatives. Can you go back to the other article and ask who the remaining candidate? Can you go back? To what? Um, near on Google searching. And it, said, it was an article that said the remaining minority candidates in the office. These are the Trump remaining minorities in the oh, office. I just want to know right. who they are because I thought only Ben Carson was <laughs> Do they got an Asian man or woman somewhere I don't in there? Know. You know they probably got some model minorities in this bitch. Who you telling? Uh, let's see. So Ben Carson and that's is that it? One exception is Ben Carson. Let's see. Stock do it white. Pete He's Carson. the only black cabinet member. And then the transportation secretary Elaine, I told you Elaine Chow who is a sole Asian American yeah. member in cabinet um and there's Alex at least three Acosta. indian american high-ranking appointees uh-huh. labor secretary a son of cuban immigrants they ask gonna be out soon too mm-hmm. hood so hood so let's see we got hood with ben carson elaine chow with Cho. oh i do remember her that's the white woman they got she, the chinese american yeah she white honey but she white though Oh, this is crazy. I just had to check and see. Model minority. Let's All right, Nero. We don't need to drag this out. It's bullshit. Um, how about you help us with this? What about this net neutrality bullshit? <sighs> see, we get one win. You take an inch. And they take it. 
take a motherfucker. Give an inch, take a mile. So what the fuck is going on with this net neutrality? Can you give us a breakdown of this, Niram, and why we should be concerned and ready to write in and march again? Doug, Doug, Alabama, we need you to take this on. Because this is a fucking problem. So we talked about net neutrality a couple episodes ago when I told y'all niggas to write in to y'all congresspeople and senates. But some of y'all niggas ain't did that shit. Y'all, y'all niggas just listen to the podcast. So, the FCC went ahead and uh, repealed net neutrality in a three to two vote. So it was like close. It was one person, um, and basically they just re- uh, voted to repeal the rules uh, that regulated like how internet service providers uh, connect us to the web. So the term net neutrality, uh, these are pretty much rules for like you know big companies like AT and T, uh, Comcast, Charter. Uh, basically, anything from them changing the speeds or blocking certain access to the web. Yeah. So the the thing about net neutrality is that they wanted the internet to be open and neutral throughout the web. So that that's happening by you go on the internet and you type in Black Love Matters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whether you are on Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, or whatever, whatever, you'll get there no problem. Now with net neutrality, you have problems where um, some service providers may uh, lend, um, lend their speeds or faster speeds or do some blocking yeah. uh, to certain websites. So, for example, say Verizon, who's also owned by... Damn, what is Verizon owned by? Some white people. Uh, no, yeah, but they're owned by like a, a big ass company. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, say they block, say they own what well, they no, say they own um part of Amazon streaming. Yeah. So they'll give their speeds and bandwidth to Amazon streaming, and then uh, charge consumers more to look at Netflix. So, you know, you got that. And then there's like other things that goes on to it. But it's definitely a big deal. Uh, and it, it goes against like what the Internet was created from. Absolutely. I think this is very interesting because, you know, the one of the class I was taking this semester was like the, the history of like digital culture and things of that sort. And, you know, one of the things that we talked about was like the, the history of the Internet or, you know, where it came from and like the World Wide Web and mm-hmm. things of that sort. And like it, it's ba- the Internet was based by or created by academics. Of course. In order for them to share their academic findings faster versus yeah. going through, books uh, you know, publishing, books and publishing yeah. and things of that sort. Sending that postcard yeah. and shit, yeah. So now, you know, with that being said, you know, it's getting to the point where the things that you guys enjoy, and we enjoy like Hulu, Netflix, and, you know, all these other um, big internet providers that, I mean, but uh, big internet companies that provide us with content. If a certain company is not dealing with it or not fucking with them or if, you know, they're not paying the right money, they can block you. Mm. So it's almost getting to the point where in a minute it's going to be like that China shit where. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Where, you know, you got these big ass Internet providers and they pretty much blocking whatever. They want. Yeah. What they want and how they want. And and then think about it this way. If you got a candidate who. Uh, on the board of like some of these companies and they trying to run and get, you know, get public, you know, trying to get in office, you can see how that can affect, um, you know, office Mm -hmm. because you got motherfuckers who are like, well, I'm on the board of Verizon and I'm going to make sure that, um, everything I do helps out Verizon. Period. And then you got, you know, 30 or 40% of them niggas that, who have a, a Verizon internet service provider, mm-hmm. now they block in, you know, certain materials and ads and everything else coming your way, certain news and shit like that. So I think that's interesting. I also think that's uh, going to be very interesting for us because, you know, we uh, we are cable cutters. So, you know, we get most of our television We're from streaming, like honey. streaming, you know, Netflix, Hulu, uh, DirecTV Now, you know, uh, sticks on fire, you know, all the, <laughs> you know, all the other stuff. So it's going to be very interesting to see how uh, that plays out. You know, I don't think nothing's going to change in the next month or so, but, you be know, in the next year, you know, in the next year, the long months, game here. They ain't playing the you know, game. this is the shit that they'll be able to change later on down the line. And I think this is something that um, I, I, I think that there will be a appeal to happen. Hopefully, mm-hmm. 
you know, there's a commission or a committee. Because I think it goes through Congress now. Yeah. Congress can repeal it. Yeah, hopefully but there's a want to, honey. commission or committee that's going to fight to repeal this. And, you know, this probably go through, like, the su- Supreme Courts and shit like yeah, that for is. a very long time. Is. But is. now, you know, they already overturned it. So it's going to be harder to, mm-hmm. you know, get them to turn it back. I agree. Yeah. I just thought that was, like, bullshit. Like, where do you... We can't catch a break or a win, can we? No. Ain't no rest for the weary. But I think this, and also I think just speaking two things as a black woman and also as a black couple, people mm. of color, underrepresented population in the United States, the internet has been our safe haven to produce the content we want. Yeah. Right. So we have all these blogs, podcasts, vloggers, internet shows, internet radio, all that stuff can then be censored or taken away. Yeah. So I see it as a form of free speech. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why all the constitutionalists who support pedophiles are enraged by this net neutrality. Because I see this as the modern day taking it of your uh, right to free speech. Right. So I see this as the virtual equivalent to that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what folks don't understand. And especially as a woman of color, people of color, underrepresented communities, we're our movements happen online, right? Mm-hmm. They're not on the main screen on TV, right? No. We, we don't have this stuff. We still don't have this huge, you know, I don't know the words. I don't, mainstream. Yeah, repair, yeah uh, on TV, television. right? Our stuff is on the internet. Yeah. So this is how we mobilize the revolution. And now you're giving them permission to take away? Mm-hmm. So if you think they, they, they this net neutrality go through, go through right? Imagine all the stuff they're going to start doing when they think things are air quote hate groups. Mm-hmm. So what do you think that's going to happen with the Black Lives Movement? What do you think is going to happen with like the entertainment and the shows we like? What do you think that means for podcasts? And what do you think that means for YouTube? What do you think that means for social media? Like All that has implications because that means white people got to get more money from it or control it. Right. So that's the piece that just got me like, oh, come on. Or again, what Master P said, if they're going to pay me a million for it, I must be worth 40 million. If they right. want to take this away. We must have so much power, mm-hmm. right? They got to get a control over it. There's some way they have to regulate and control it. So, yeah. so another thing, another interesting thing is, uh, so, you know, they had like this, you know, big email campaign where it's like send your emails to FCC talking they about whether or not, you know, so you're supporting things of that sort. So a recent study has found that uh, close to 8 million of those comments submitted uh, where uh, domains that was attributed to like fake gener- fake email generators, and they had like, like the same identical wording and things like that sort. I was reading an article that was in like the New York Times. It's like you know, my name was used um, for you know uh, for the agreements up to repeal net neutrality, but I didn't do anything or I didn't say that. Oh so God. it's the point of you know they have released like this big database of like all these names and people and things that sort and they're using like real life names and cities and shit like that another thing that also came from this is that about um a half a million of these emails Mm -hmm. came from ips from russia okay fuck i forgot about russia what what's going on (laughs) i forgot about Russia. so you know like i said you know they had like this big email campaign to like email the FCC yeah. to, you know talk about your comments and things of that sort so nearly 23 million comments were uh, on this uh, like that was sent to like the FCC and things of that sort so out of that 23 million about 8 million were attributed to uh, fake emails and used by fake Jesus. email generators Jesus. and it had identical wordings and things of that sort Jesus, and then uh, you had another half a million emails that came from uh, domains from Russia. So this is Russia again, you know, coming in and doing what they want, how they want. This is want. like this is the thing is, and, and this is one of the things we were talking about in our class is that they don't have like the regulations and laws in place uh, for the internet. Yeah, because they didn't expect no. the internet to be this well, be this big. But if Russia did the things they did in real life, like breaking it, you know, they hacking yeah, into somebody's house, you, you know, break, hacking into somebody's computer and putting like documents out, that, that, that's almost equivalent as um, a Russian spy coming into, you know, somebody's house, breaking into their house and stealing documents and then leaking them. Yeah. It's the same equivalent, but the laws are not in place yet to. Cause I would consider it an act of war. 
Like that's an act Absolutely. of war. Yeah. Like for a Russian, think about that shit. If a Russian spy came in to uh, uh, a candidate's house, broke in there and stole some documents or you know commerce converse- uh, documents or whatever that pertains to their um, to their campaign or anything, yeah, that's against the and law. then um, leak that shit and publish that shit out in the world. Mm-hmm. That would be an act of war. Yes, absolutely. So why is it not an act of war when they're doing this shit and, um, you know, trying to manipulate um, all the things that's going on and, like, what's going on with the U.S.? Yeah, because, because they in on it now. Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. They in on it. That's why. Obama's no longer the president. Um, Can we get a, a town hall with Obama? <laughs> what, what's something Michelle's doing? I haven't heard Michelle's voice in a year. She was just out at that conference. That's true. Maybe two months. But I feel like they're just doing a good job shading. It's like, I would mm-hmm. love to be their kitchen table talk. What's their kitchen table talk? Mm-hmm. I wonder how he feel about him trying to tear down everything he's done. That's a good question. That's bullshit. Everything, like even his net neutrality, I thought that came out the thin air. Yeah. Like, really? Anything that got Obama's name on it, they te- they're tearing it down. Because even when they were bringing up net neutrality, I was like, I think that's something Obama just really started putting in place yeah. not too many years ago. Mm-hmm. Right, and I'm like, why does he keep coming for him? Like, he cannot keep his name out his mouth. It's ridiculous, mm-hmm. right? Mm, anything else? But stay woke, y'all. Yeah. Um, I think it's just important. Like, we've had wins, right? So we have Keisha Lance Bottoms in um, was it Georgia? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had some folks in San Francisco, New Orleans. Just really big wins. But I think my take home point: it don't end there. No. So we got more elections to win, but we got to make sure we hold these folks responsible. Mm-hmm. And we have to make sure we still a voice, right? So, like I said, we can't vote, put them in a place, and then leave. We got to still give them a month. I say give them 30 days to get their parking pass. And after that, you got to be in their ass and be very vocal. Yeah, I agree. Because now we got to look at this net neutrality thing. They still really ain't finalized this um, health insurance stuff, right. this affordable care act stuff. It's they a lot of the Russia stuff plan. going on. Yeah, this fucking tax plan that might fuck over a lot of people's going on. This Mueller investigation. Yeah. like It's so... And they talking about Trump talking about firing Mueller ass and shit. <laughs> Jesus. To have the confidence of a sorry white man. <laughs> All right, do we got some black love? Can we talk about something a little more relationship? I feel like that was a real heavy, heavily um, politically focused. We okay. haven't talked about 45 in a minute, though. No, we haven't. Well, what's the next article we got? The thing is, I seen this article, and it was basically going back and forth that should you tell your friend if you don't like their partner? Oh, so should you tell your friend your par- their partner is trash? That's how I read it. Oh, okay. So what's your thoughts on that? Um... Oh, or you want me to read through some of the stuff that the article said? And I tell you, I really don't give a damn what the article said. I have a very strong opinion on it. <laughs> <laughs> so in the article, they said that, you know, you have to be honest. It's this idea of being honest with your friend. But when do everything that don't need to be said, right, need to be said. Um, so they said some stuff that you need to really go back and forth with yourself before you tell you tell your friend if you think they partner's trash is one do you really know your friend's par, um, partner is it possible that initial impressions are incorrect two can the friendship tolerate your input about the partner well shit if it can't hit, tolerate it we ain't friends <laughs> next consider the relationship may be too new for you to weigh in on um is your friend asking for your input and then lastly ask yourself what are your intentions before sharing your feelings so that's what they're saying, things you need to take in consideration. I think it's cute to take in consideration. Mm-hmm. Um, but, mm, you, know, you want to go first or you want yeah, me to break Tell me how first? you really feel. I, I think, first of all, I don't have a lot of friends. Niram will say I have no friends. But if I put you in my close group of friends, I should be able to let you know how I feel. So associates, mm. I'm not going to say anything, right? So if yeah. we just associate and I'd be like, hmm. If you like them, I love them. You know what I'm saying? But if they're true friends, I would say my friends kind of always ask me my opinion on it, right? Mm-hmm. But my rule of thumb is that if I'm really getting a bad sense, I have to pull you aside and tell you something. Like, And I, the thing is, Nyambi's only going to tell you once, though. And I'm never going to bring it up again. So I think, well, first of all, the deal breakers is if they whooping up on you, stealing from you, like, you know what I'm saying? Doing something like that. I'm not quiet about that. I'm in their face. I'm telling you. I'm telling your mama. I'm telling everyone around because I'm reporting up and out. Okay? (laughs) I'm reporting up and out. This is bullshit. 
Mm-hmm. But I think it becomes gray when you have a friend who's with a partner that you don't think, as we use in the black community, that's equally yoked. Mm-hmm. So I think that can come with maybe there was someone who isn't as ambitious as you would presume that your friend wants or someone who's maybe a little bit more emotional mm-hmm. abuse. I think that emotional and verbal abuse is another line that folks yeah. teeter back and forth of because sometimes you don't know people's dynamics, but you know it don't feel right or right. sound right, right? right? So I think those are the ones where you're like, should I say something? Do I not say something? What about a nigga that's a gaslighting ass nigga? See, gaslighting tiptoes on that emotional abuse though. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think it depends on how severe the gaslighting is, right? So if it's gaslighting to the point where this friend doesn't come out, they're isolated, then yeah, I think that's a non-negotiable. That's something you call out. Like, that's not something I'm even going to the friend. I want I want the partner to know. Mm-hmm. This is how I feel and I see you, right? But I think, again, when it's more of that superficial gaslighting, you know, stuff that can go both ways. He's like, oh, it's not that I don't want to spend time with friends, but I just want us to focus on our relationship and our foundation. That's not a bad thing to say. But you know when a nigga doing it to be funny like that's the type of stuff that i worry about so that's what i would say but the way i do it is i try to have an initial conversation just to say i love you and if you with them you with them but you know i'm just getting this this intuition i always tell my friend i'm getting this real real intuition uh, intuition about it Mm -hmm. and again of course if you love him or her i'm rocking with you but i just would be doing you a disservice if i did not tell you how I feel about this situation. But after I do that, I don't say anything else. So after I've said my piece once, and I'm only going to say it once, when I see that partner, I s- greet them, I hug them, and, and go on about my business, right? Because folks have to want it for themselves. I try to be that friend to be, say, I'm a judgment-free zone. Like, so if you come to me with some bullshit, your partner on some bullshit, fine, he on some bullshit. If you decide to get back with nothing, fine right i never want them to be ashamed of it but i always say you got to give a gut reaction or like cheating cheating yeah. is also non-negotiable if i catch a man cheating i'm the type of bitch i'm taking receipts and i'm sending it to you well if they in an open relationship that's fine i'm still gonna send it because i my loyalty is to that friend and the way i'll do it you know i'm slick now y'all be slick i do just like i did at bot store i would go up to him i'm like hey how you doing i see you here with so-and-so so i'm going to send the pictures to them to um, bust his cuz this afternoon. So I don't know if you want to do it or you want me to do it, but the picture's being sent at four o'clock. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's no confusion. And the thing is, I'm not even gonna be like, oh, oh girl, this young man cheating. I'm like, oh girl, look who I seen today here. All right. Send. <laughs> I don't know who he with. Who is that? His sister? Who's that he with, girl? Come on. Well, so I, I don't know. Like I, I don't I don't know why folks are scared of this. Are we supposed to be friends? We're supposed to be friends. Um, I think too many times folks be scared to tell folks how they feel. And that's the thing. It's just how I feel. And some of this, this what this lady said might be right. I might not know the partner. They might be different. You know, there is a reason you're with them, but I do feel like I'm doing a disservice of a friend if I don't speak up. But I'm not one of those friends that beat it up. Because it are I do think people overstep boundaries where if you tell something to somebody once or twice and they still don't get it, well obviously they fucking like it. Then you need to be you need to accept that relationship or choose not to be friends with them. Th- then that's the choice you have to make personally, right? True. Go ahead. Um, I agree. You know, it's in the words of Crystal and Kit Fury, I've been I've told them multiple friends to break up with them. Yeah, just break up break with up them. Break up with her. Yep. Um, and I, I say it with a straight face. Yeah. Unemotionally, so they can know I'm serious. Yeah. No emotion at all. Yeah. Then they get trash. Yeah. Break up with them. Yeah. And I think that's really what it is, especially like the people who are in the inner circle that's inside the Oreo hoop. Yep. The, or not the Oreo, the Cheerio hoop. Yeah. You know, you know who you are. You know, I, I will. I'll yeah. let them know. And I have no quarrels about it. And, but I am like you. Like, I'm just going to mention it. You know, you I give one time. Once. But I might mention it twice. Like, I'm going to give it once. You say, that nigga trash. And then I'm going to say, I reiterate, that nigga trash. I don't know if your mama didn't hug you enough <laughs> or your daddy ain't hug you love you enough. Yeah. To not want you to want better. Yeah. Um. I don't know if you have low self esteem. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Or whatever other things that are going on in your life to yeah. to still want to be with trash. Yeah. But I'm gonna tell you again, break up with them, girl. Yeah. Or, or break up with them. Because guys yeah. be in a situation too when they believe them same crazy as women. Yes. Nigga, that girl is crazy. crazy. <laughs> Why are you with her? Why are you with her? <laughs> She scares me. 
because it hurts so good. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's something about that energy that they're attracting. Right. It's mm -hmm. something or something that they're scared to lose or, you know, it's also, I believe in that idea of mirroring. So it's something that that partner is mirroring to them. Right. Yeah. That, that's a, either a, a current self or a past self or self they're scared of. Right. Or the idea of being alone. So you got to navigate through that too. I think when you get to a certain age, sometimes folks just settle. Yeah. And don't want to be alone. I get mm -hmm. it. But I, but uh, to flip it, I think you also have to tread lightly when folks get married. So we're talking about relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So we're just talking about dating. Naomi's a lot more loose mouth when dating. But once you say I do up there with the Lord. I ain't got shit to do with And it. then don't put me up there next to you. <laughs> Only thing I'm checking in. Is that nigga hitting on you? No. Then they get verbal abusive. No, okay. well, you that's gotta, something y'all got to deal with. You, you, you got to figure that out. You got to figure you, that shit out. You, him, and the Lord just made this covenant. You need to, you know, you got to be careful with that, right? Mm -hmm. Because when folks leave and then they come back and you can't be caught in the middle talking shit about their spouse, right? That's what I'd be very careful. Ass. Even with boyfriends, like, I'd be boyfriend, girlfriend, I'd be very careful of what I say. Even if I feel like in my head, nigga, he, he a dog hole. Like he a, he crazy. Leave, he a booger wooger. Leave that booger will go alone. You, I'd be very, very weary of how I say it, especially when people are married, right? Because, you know, sometimes you got to just have an outlet, right? Mm -hmm. And as a friend, you're just supposed to be that sounding board. And that don't mean you sound back. So I, I do think once folks are married, it's a different game. Because then you got to think how you want to be involved in that person's life. Because yeah. if you don't get involved, if you don't or aren't cordial with their partner, there's not at least a mutual respect between them and their partner. Mm -hmm. That puts problem if they begin to have kids, um, inviting them to your home. Like, you know, right. it's just, it trickles. Shit start getting weird. You know, yeah. when that shit uh, started happening, I'd be like, well, yeah. you married him. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I like to say, I like child. If you like it, I love it. Right. Um, if you're going to stay with them, that's good. If you're not going to stay with them, that's good too. Know that I'm supportive and I'm loyal to you no matter what you do. And the words are near them. I ain't got to fuck them, so I don't care. Oh. Shut up. I'm for real. You got anything else about that? <laughs> uh, I don't think we rode the fence on that one. Yeah, we sure did. Break up with him. Yeah. I, as I get older, I agree. I'm more with the kid fairy Chris to break up with him. Mm -hmm. And I even I th even think when we first started the podcast, I was like, well, I don't tell nobody to break up. Yes, I do. Break up with him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Move on. All right. There's more fish in the sea. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Well, we got some shout outs. Oh, so you, ain't no more fly girl. I can't find that book. You, it's on. I'm looking at it. Where? On the kitchen table. Where the GPS? It's straight ahead. Okay. Oh my goodness, Nero. I'm. I need to get back in it. I'm gonna get back in it. I'll get back in it. No, I'm gonna get back in it. I want to read it. It was interesting. It is interesting. But you know, we had some things going on. And, I know. Uh, the book went missing for a little bit. Self care, right? I need to get back in. I'm gonna get back in it. All right then. Well, yeah. it's, you just want to hurry up and get the shout out Friday. Y'all got my word. Oh Jesus! Read that book. Oh, he was sad when he ain't had no shout outs. We ain't couldn't do shout out Friday last Friday. Mm -hmm. All right, what's going on? So we got some shout outs, y'all. Yes. Um, as always, be sure to leave a one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. If y'all leave a five star rating, mm -hmm. we'll definitely read and shout y'all out. Yep. So we got a couple here. Perfect. Uh, the first one is for from S. Pender, and the title is My Family. And it family? says. Uh, oh, Framley. It says Framley. Okay, I thought you'd have made uh, that shit up near No. Me. Okay. My speech impediment ain't messed up this one yet. Uh, yeah. That's what it says. Uh, family. Okay, so I think it's friends, family. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, combination. Maybe he frat. You know, Come on, frat. near him. Uh, well, either way, it says, um, I love, I found Black Love Matters on Twitter few weeks ago and i've been uh listening faithfully since listening to uh nero and naomi is like having a wine a wine down with old friends um no it's like talking with family <laughs> i absolutely love their energy oh thank you thank you i'm glad mm -hmm. we got new folks see twitter yeah, i told you that twitter that twitter honey yeah i gotta get on it okay. when the last time you sent the tweet at least a month. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I didn't forget your Twitter handle. Reading to Vault. Oh, <laughs> is it? I is am it? reading. Yeah. No, it's I am Naomi. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't gave somebody else a shout out. I uh, know, right? <laughs> reading to Vault. Oh. Uh, we got another one from, what's this? F L Fabian 94. Mm -hmm. um, and the title was Young and Learning. I was going to say Black 94. Blood. Jesus, is that the year you was born? Shit. I think I still got clothes from 94. Shh. Okay. 
I got a pair of Jordans older than you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. And it says, uh, I love this podcast. Nira and Nyambi have a beautiful dynamic together. And uh, in the last couple of months of listening, I have learned so much about relationships and black love. I am in a uh, I am in my early uh, 20s, so some of the opinions that Nero and I on behalf, I don't necessarily think of. But so he's saying nice, we old as fuck. But that was a little nice shade. To see a different point of a, ca- a point of view occasionally. Uh, Are also, we the old surly cousins? I guess so. Shit, I'm just 30. Mm-hmm. Shit. Yeah. I also just wanted to say that this couple is also very uh, intelligent. And I love when they discuss topics. Thank you for your content. Yes, yes. Smiley face. Thank you, El Fabian. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got one from Lena. Mm-hmm. And it says, here's your five stars. Yeah, I love a five star. You know I love a one, two, three, four, five oh, star rating and review, star. y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, it says, hey, bruh, six cuz. I love your podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys keep uh, you guys keep coming up with great content, and you two seems to have a great relationship dynamic. You're funny and insightful on a, a number of great co- topics. Uh, keep the episodes coming. I wish um, all of you. I wish you both of all the best. Shit. What is that? How did you skip over that? You know I it got says, dyslexia. Keep the episodes coming. I wish you both all okay. the best. Okay. See, see what be happening is sometimes <laughs> like the words. I'll be reading the words, but I'll be reading it ahead. Should we have an episode on like black people in like, I don't want to say dyslexia, learning disabilities, I, learning styles. It's not disabilities, learning styles. I, I am dyslexic, yo. Don't be acting like I'm not dyslexic. Did you get actually diagnosed or is this like a WebMD diagnosis? Does it matter? Yes. If a nigga reading out loud and mm-hmm. I, I see the words. And in my head, I'm saying them, but when they come out, they something else. That's something. Shit, that's a learning disability. Okay. We could talk about learning. We should talk about learning styles. Maybe in January when the children go back to school. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got one. I think this is April. Yeah. April MC. Mm-hmm. I think that that's an interesting way to spell April. No, it's not. It's phonetically. Oh. What do you mean, okay. interest? Don't we get caught up how the white folks smell it. Oh, okay. Come on, Excuse me. Uh, the title is Candid Soulful Podcast. It says Nira and Nyambi are candid about um, about relationships and how to navigate through the process of being in a real one. Yeah. They are amusing, insightful, and both of their voices are calming to the spirit. Nira will break out in a song, oh, geez, and I love it. Today. it. He almost is your living. No, you ain't did your living. We're saying goodbye off the oh, sound of music. You didn't never even see that. So long. Come on. Farewell. Come on. Come on. Good. Nero. She said it's common, so I'm trying to calm her spirit. Nyambi. So you know, she said Nero break out in song, and I love it. Nyambi has a uh, Nyambi has such a beautiful heart, big and beautiful heart, uh, with so much compassion. A great listen. I have stopped to listen. I stopped. I stopped the podcast many times to journal sometimes. Um, and they have no, no, it says my phone, a great listen. God damn, I have stopped the podcast many times to journal something that they have said. You won't mess up April's review. Okay, well, want me to take read, over from yeah, here? Can you read the next one because my computer froze? Oh, oh, you blame it on the computer? It is. You don't see that spinning thing? Okay, the next one's from Tears Bell, and the title said Addicted, and it says, I'm addicted. Enough said, This is my type of girl. <laughs> Next, we got emails from Brianna. Hey, girl. Subject says Monday. The message says, hey, mom and dad, just reaching out because the last episode spoke levels to me. Um, then she broke it. I love how she always break it down. Um, so it says decoded. Um, brilliant book. Papa Niram would love it. And yes, it comes in audio. <laughs> you know, I love a good audio book. <laughs> All books don't have to come in audio for you to get yes, it. Yes, it do. No, it doesn't. I t- I nigga got dyslexia. It will help with your dyslexia. Look. Allegedly. I'm an audible learner. I read. I read it in college. A professor made us. Can you believe that? Anyway, the book is both a memoir and auto, uh, autobiography um, because he wrote it himself about himself about a specific time. LOL. I know, right? But it's juicy, street, old school, and just all around insightful. Y'all should check it out. There was a lot of talk about him having a ghostwriter because a black man with his past somehow couldn't articulate it to him. Yep. 
crafty crackers. Um, but he was interviewed about the book YouTube it, and literally at one point he makes a remark in the audience full of whites clapped as if it was an accomplishment to have a broad vocabulary, which is something he talks about in his book too. And it's all dope as fuck. Maybe I have to break out that decoded. Like I feel like I missed that era. Why do we miss that? Because we was in college. I mean, we was in co- duh, but I feel like I should at least peep through it. That surprised me mm-hmm. that I haven't. Um, but you're right, um, Brianna. We might have to add that to our list to peep through real quick over um, this winter holiday. Next, her sub note is therapy. I am I for one am here looking for looking <laughs> that ass up. I like to see myself in my therapist um, as well. I don't need them being surprised sh- and shit. I need them to know what the fuck is up. One thing I do judge on is how much school they had. Um, don't <laughs> don't be trying to talk to me with two years of school. Nah, I need fifty years of school, please. Then we can see what you about. Or I like uh. <laughs> Or I would be like my mom and pack my purse up and go, I'm with you. Neil is definitely more open to different types of therapists, years of experience, learning, training. I'm not. You never know. Shit. I'm, I'm looking for a, a particular. I think low key, there needs to be more black male therapists. It mm-hmm. actually need to be more therapists that I think are like couples. Like, so a black couple actually having their own um, firm is not the word, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Service. Like they just do therapy together. Yeah, yeah. So if you had couples therapies or individual therapy or mm-hmm. like family therapy, I think that would be beneficial. I know like some white folks, I don't know any black couples who actually do that, but I mm-hmm. think that would be bomb.com. Maybe we should go back and get it. What do we need? Two more How many years? schools? How many school we going to get? How you many know degrees, you like degrees on a thermometer do we got to get? You know you like degrees like a thermometer. I baby. do. Next, she said personal. So I've been doing some thinking and I hear Papa Nero reaching out. I was thinking I could submit my resume to both of y'all and y'all can go down the list and see what services you could use. LOL. I have to dust it off first though. LOL. I haven't touched it since I was 19 and I'm going on 55. Get that resume together. <laughs> I didn't tell y'all. Get that resume together. Because it's probably another dream job somewhere out there mm. for you. Get that resume together. I didn't tell y'all. I applied to 10 jobs a week just for just fun. Just for fun. Y'all You'll be niggas, surprised. Y'all niggas better get y'all fucking shit together. <laughs> and then lastly, she said politics, roles, eyes, crafty. <laughs> love the episode. Talk to y'all soon. Peace and love. Thanks, mm. Brianna. We always love. We always love hearing from you. Yeah, we the do. The next one's from D in the subject's episode 80. And it's What's Your Therapy? And it says, I'm so over 45 every hour, every second. He and his band of ignorant cabinet do the most. Cannot hashtag cannot with 45 hashtag. Why is the impeachment process so long? Hashtag if 45 was black or biracial, he would have already been in jail. He'd be uh, not in jail. Under, under the, the jail. jail. <laughs> what you talking about? Under the jail. That nigga be under the jail. Next one's from Re. Subject is 25 minutes in. And the message said, had to pause the podcast just to say, Nyambi, you took me from tears to sadness to crying from laughing. And I'm only about 25 minutes in the podcast. Okay. Hit and play again. <laughs> Ain't that life? Mm-hmm. I feel like that would describe. 2017 just a roller coaster of things people emotions and feelings yeah um and then next we got one from chantal the subject says someone who needs your fake baby shower gifts okay good because we need to get them out oh this is perfect chantal we'll take this weekend to go through this and send you some stuff mm. so it says hi Naomi. this episode was too funny my four-year-old was in the back seat like my what's funny anyway my favorite cuzzo um has three kids of her own and just got a new house that she's budget- budgeting to save coin to make payments after living with her granny for three years in a one bedroom with three kids oh she says she deserved oh, it honey she deserved it long story i'm um, short um anyway her youngest brother um just turned 18 earlier this year right before he graduated high school he got some mentally unstable girl Jesus. <laughs> Not mentally unstable. Come it's... on. I know exactly what you're talking about, though. Pregnant. Young teens having a baby girl in two weeks. He is staying with um, my cousin um, at her new house with this girl because the mom is now homeless. Damn. Jesus. They had shit. a baby shower and barely got anything they need. I told you about them sorry ass baby showers, especially at that age. Remember, we were talking about weddings? Mm-hmm. I told you I got them a paper shredder. <laughs> <laughs> at 18? So at 18 at the baby shower, they probably got them dollar store ones. He's like, near him said. I'm telling you, did you at least get like 30 of them? <laughs> no. They got the five pack. That's it. And she, um, 
Chantal said, I've been saving all of my eight month old baby clothes, girl clothes to mail him. He needs a stroller, clothes, diapers, girl, whatever you can mail. Please help. I want to help him even though it's his responsibility. I know it will lift the stress off my cousin's back too. Yeah. Thank you for offering anything. Love, Shan. And Nyambi, the Lord always makes a way for you to receive new plans. Just open up to new opportunities for work. Wish you both the best. And near him, do the damn thing. Yes, Chantal, we'll get something out. We'll probably email you like sometime this weekend. We'll get something out to you, some type of care pack. She left her address. Yeah, she left her address. I'll yeah. just take it out. We'll send some type of, we'll box some stuff up and send it's care yeah. package and a couple gift cards. Because they, 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 yeah, we like, need it. It's like, you we gotta help the children though. Like I believe that's a baby. He we just turned eighteen and he a kid himself, so he need help. Plus they get your ass boy clothes, girl clothes. It's like maybe she having twins, so Yeah, I got, got everything. I mean, well at this point it don't matter. You just want clean clothes as a baby. Right. But yeah, I got a little bit of everything and I'll definitely send it on. Um, you know. It's hard. It's mm-hmm. hard. I can only imagine, you know, being that young and having a child and figuring out well, you a baby yourself, right? Yeah. So I know it's probably rough on the family, but y'all doing the yeah. right thing to go ahead and support him because it's about the children. It ain't about him no more, right? I bet the ain't family about him looking at his ass all crazy and shit. Especially, I'm talking about sis bro, cause who just basically. So I'm imagining sis with the three kids who stayed with granny for right. three years was hustling the fuck up, right. and saving all her coin, like only spending money on what her children probably mm-hmm. to get enough coin to get into her own place, right? right. And then right when she get to a decent spot, she got to take care yeah, of her cause bro. little bro coming. Yeah, because and it's not even just a little brother. It's different if he fucking up because. If he fucking up, go go be grown, right? right? But now he got children into it. So you mm-hmm. can't just, you know, kick folks out with children. You can't do that. Sure can. Yeah. Remind me of my baby scare. Jesus. What? Oh, my goodness. But, yeah, Chantal, we'll get with you. We'll send something else. We also got another one from Chantal. It says, love the Netflix movie, Mud Bounce. See, I told you it was a good movie. Um, It says, love this movie. I watched it Sunday before the podcast Monday. Girl, Mary J did that. Didn't she? She didn't say a lot, but I felt her through that screen. Like, I knew sis was going in. She was in pain. Like the pain was coming out her pores, and she played that well. She as took well. all that can do shit <laughs> and bottled it up and put it in this damn movie. It says, "I love um, new stories about a different perspective um, on those times with air quote black folks and whites who had to work together but still um, be um, were treated differently." Yeah, that army story mm-hmm. that still get to me. The people back then were stronger than me, ain't they? The Lord brought me in this world at the right time. Okay, because I would have been killed young. Me too. People back then had more strength um, than we do now. More different stories is what the world needs in order to see what needs changes. We oh. still needs to change. Oh, just your speech impediment. Yeah, it did mention kill that? a little bit. The oh. next email we got from um, Juliana. Oh, I like that name. That's really pretty. Um, the subject is what is that? Shock emoji. Yeah, it's a shock emoji face. It's like five of them. Yeah. <laughs> it said, "What the entire fuck? I can't believe all that shit happened." Tell us the PayPal, and we'll help you out um, in Black the transition. Love matters at gmail.com. No, it's not. Okay. Listening to this going into work this morning i had to stop and send the email hey, i can't believe this shit happened we're here for you thank you like we're good y'all we don't need no money or anything just continue to listen and give us those five star ratings and to share us on twitter and podcast these emails mean a lot but yeah i ain't gonna lie last week i was in um was that week before i was in like numb state like it was a lot sis and yeah just coming on like as we said when we started the podcast this is our form of therapy so just coming on here and being able to say it out loud and process it and people saying nah sis you ain't crazy this Mm -hmm. is crazy or sis it's okay to take a few weeks off like you know that's the type of stuff that i'm internally grateful for y'all and you know i believe in the lord and i'm steadfast and i know it's something out there bigger right um, the next one is from Shanice and the subject says, Hey, and it says near and Nyambi. Hey fam. So happy to hear from y'all. Nyambi. I'm so happy you took the time to process and rest. It's inspiring for me. It's hard to take rest sometimes because I feel guilty about not being productive air quotes that DC pace, you know, I love that you're not going through this alone. Disappointments can be such a huge blow to the stomach. And I'm glad that you've got a support partner and therapist to help you on your journey looking forward to hearing about your new hobby love y'all Shanice that's true though Shanice mm-hmm. I was just like you so that idea of guilt right yeah. so I had this two guilty things so this idea of saying oh my goodness I don't have a job where is my check coming from because as y'all know I've been getting a check since I've been 14 every two weeks okay <laughs> so that guilt there and then two even the guilt to say well I need to at least take some weeks off just to get my damn mind right to see what I want to do and process that so yeah I'm right with you. It took me to get to this age to be like, fuck it. I'm just going to do what I got to do and I'll get back to it later. So I, it, it, it ain't come easy. 
It ain't come easy. I was like, hell, I just got to get a job somewhere. Let me go walk a dog. Let me you, let me do something, right? What, well, Nero? Say your piece. Now I'm being easy. Nero, maybe I should be a flight attendant. Yeah. Nero, I sh- maybe I should do hospice. Nero. <laughs> What do you you know why I said hospice, right? Dog walker. You know why I said baby. hospice. I'm like, baby, just take a break. Yeah, I sure was. I went through autumn careers. Shit. Hospice was high in our neighborhood, and I was like, you know, the dead appreciative. Oh, my God. oh I, they ain't dead. They almost dead. They almost dead. They almost dead. Oh, man, I mean, well, it's, what do you mean they almost it was, dead? Well, I, what is the purpose of the hospice? You know, it's just they're on a different population, right? Mm-hmm. They ain't on no petty shit. I have a question. What? So, what we was watching is like the number of Y's at the hey means something. Was that that documentary? Vandal. American Vital. Was it Vandal? Yeah. Vandal? This E's Y's. I, know, I was about to say, so does the number of E's mean something? Does that mean like how Friendly. much family yeah, that's, you are? You should be quiet there. You know, because the number of Y's afterwards. Yeah. What when, mean, you, when you test the uh, opposite person yeah. uh, or when you're interested in somebody, number of Y's means how much you want to get down with them. Be quiet there. What the number of E's in the middle? How friendly they are. I'm just saying, it's like, does that mean like how much family y'all are? Uh-uh. And how silly. much y'all relate to each other? You're so silly. I'm, I'm just asking. It could be. It could be. Curious. Let me the, Google it. The Go next, ahead. we got another one, Um, another one from Juliana M. And the subject says WJOB. And it's a message. Y'all, I think I've become your biggest fan. Y'all took me back. Oh, was that because we asked where Book Shine, mm. what radio station he was on? Yeah. Cutting crazy. That's still a bad mistake. I think you skipped the email. Did I? Yeah, you skipped the email from Amber. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. So next from Amber, um, the, the the subject is no subject needed. It says, "Look here, Nyambi, the job was not from you." Come on. First of all, I like how the sentence started. Look at here, Nyambi. <laughs> Look at here. <laughs> I needed that. Sis. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm. I needed that. Sis. Okay. Nyambi, the job was not for you. God definitely didn't boost you up to break you um break you back down. Get into that self care that Nyambi keeps talking about. Yes. Oh, Pause. Oh shit! You scared me. That oh, self care I'll be me. talking about. Oh, he scared me. Jesus, almost ran out this kitchen. Come on. <laughs> Mercury is in retrograde, so the universe is acting a plum fool. That baby shower situation, I will be returning everything at the Netsbot store from the ultimate gift card. <laughs> 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 or maybe that was a sign that the baby's in that step. See, Neil? Um, yes, Neil, I'm not happy. Your path was interrupted on accident. Have your sweet and salty moments and get it together. You give, <laughs> you give out too much advice. Um, and the mood, the more you know, um, the wallow in this space. Much love, Amber. Thank you. I needed that. I'm mm. telling you. Look here. That might be my new start line. Look at here. Look at here. Let me tell you something. Let me talk to you quick. That used to be the line. Let me talk to you quick. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I needed that. Thank you so much, Aaron. Amber. I'm sorry. Um, next, we have something from Kay, and the subject says, love the show. And it says, what up, though? My husband and I absolutely love the show. We have been married for 22 years. We've been together for 29 years. Um, we're both 47 years old. He's from Chicago. I'm from Detroit. We live in Baton Rouge. We met in Su- we met at Southern University. We have three children, a daughter, 21, two sons, age 17 and 11. My husband and I are going to reach out and tell y'all a story. Keep up the good work. Talk to y'all later. Oh, good. I was just about to say, I want to know their story. Because right. from Chi-Town to Detroit to Baton Rouge, well, that's a good combination, honey. Well, that's good. That's good life. Mm-hmm. That's good living and good stories. Right. And they got them children. And swamps, too. Do you say the swamps too? They got these children at these good ages too. They can usually get some good advice. One thing, right. perfect. You want to read some stuff on the website now? Uh, yeah. Give me one second. All right. So from the website, oh. one's from Crystal. It's from episode seventy nine. Young, gifted, and black. Um, and on white on white violence. What are our titles be? <laughs> you could just tell we just be going off the mm-hmm. dome. The message: This is my one, two, three, four, five, five star review. Star. Yes. Here you go. Y'all are a great mixture of old school and millennial love. Courtship and teamwork, communication and support for each other. Keep up the good work. I pray to have what you all have one day before I'm too old and set in my ways. LOL. It ain't no wrong being set in your ways because Neil is set in his ways. Hunty. You still love me, though. I do still love you. You find somebody still uh, love you. We got one from Heartless 305. Oh, Heartless 305. Wait a minute. How can you be so heartless? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Uh, and this is from episode 81. We back and outing. And what's this? Guess who got fired? <laughs> Why did I call it that? Guess Cause, who got fired? Because you was like, guess who got fired? And I was like, the person or you? It's like, both. I'm both. <laughs> like, you didn't get fired. Anyway, it said, hi, Nero Naomi. First of all, let me say welcome back. We missed you. Dearly, Naomi, I want to tell you that things will work out for you. I'm sure of it. You're full of black girl magic. 
And okay, Nair, why are you pausing like because that? Because I got to. ain't going to have me on here crying. For, you know, uh-huh. for the dramatic. You full of black girl magic, girl. Mm-hmm. And you'll get through this. Yes. Shout out to Nerum. Shout out to Nerum for being the goat. He was the goat. Bye. <laughs> through your trials and tribulations. He was, yeah, he was. Black love exists and it's beautiful. In addition, what? In addition to. <laughs> what happened to- uh, in in addition, there was a woman accused of rape, but it was against another woman. Mm. It was uh, Melanie uh, from The Voice, yeah. and her accuser used to be her best friend. However, Melanie did, denied that it was rape and reminded. I do that remember was that. You know what? Oh. I do remember that. Heartless. Thank you for another great. Okay. I do remember that because remember we keep saying. So when is this gonna flip to the, on the white women? Right. If you see, Melly, that's still Latino woman. I want this to flip right. on white women. White woman cutting crazy because they be so crafty with it. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm, yeah, that is a good one, though, Heartless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we got one from D. And it, you oh, know, D. From, yeah. from saying episode, episode 81, we back. And it's a Lord with a T. Lord, <laughs> the box store. <laughs> they tried, tried it. it. They meant so well, though. Really? Really. <laughs> a going away baby shower. That's what it was. That's I'm hoping that <laughs> just in Madam, Madam ten years Sarah. or twenty years, like this is just be a good conversation. You know how like when people ask you, like, tell me something interesting. Well, <laughs> as a going away party, <laughs> they gave me a baby shower. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, Mrs. Naomi, in the words of Kendrick Lamar, you gonna be all right. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Naren, for being uh the supportive Boo thing that their boo thing needs. I'm glad you both are back. We're back. Yeah. All right. We got some emails too. I mean, I know emails. Oh, we, we just some... read the email. Oh, voicemail. Yeah, oh, we got some... voicemails. Yeah. Oh, we got a lot of love sure, this week. We Thank y'all know. so much. This this meant a lot. Like yeah. I'm, I'm all the emails y'all get. I save. I print them. I reread them. So I, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Give me one second. Oh Jesus. All right. It's you coming up. Hi, Miriam and Ayami. Hey, girl. This is the DCL Taker. Amber, what up, girl? Um, Nayami, I just want to let you know that the past few episodes that I've been listening to, you have been having me weak and woke at the same dang on time. Mm -hmm. First of all, can I tell you about Tiavana and how the website is officially down because they can go out of business? What? So you need to get all your little crappy tea. What? On in there. I gotta go. Tiavana is going out of business. Damn, uh, I gotta get me some chocolate chai. Um, let all your little nice little people know. Everyone needs to know to go ahead and get the tea because that is very therapeutic. And I agree yeah, with you. Agree. You gotta get those Tiavana teas. I'm very bougie along with you. <laughs> when it comes to the amount of tea. I'm it telling you. Serious. Let's see what else. Um, it's shout out Friday. I'm probably too late because you guys are probably already recording. But um, you guys have been hitting on so many things, so many different topics, the sexual assault. I'm it's at huge. the point that if you don't have the money, don't even touch me. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm just trying to figure out where all these people are coming out of the woodwork. And, Come on. Um, like Niram said, all these rapey ass niggas yeah. is getting up out of the street. Like yeah. they are really coming for you. But I'm still yeah. trying to figure out how come Trump is not well, being he ain't accountable for what he did. It's exactly. just so weird out here. Exactly. And um what else were you all talking about the other day that I was kinda agreeing with? I don't know. But you all have been definitely hitting some major points as far as the relationships, the gaslighting thing. Oh my God! I really want you all to just do a whole episode on gaslighting. Gaslighting is real. Mm-hmm. Gaslighting can. Oh wait, she got she came back though. Hold on. Like I was saying, yes, please do an episode on that. Also, um, Nyambi, I wish you the best of luck in whatever you're getting ready to do as far as your major moves away from the big the uh, big box store because. <laughs> Um, try it, man. That can be triggering working at a place like that. Yeah. During the holiday season, I know all about that. And I just really hope that you consider Howard, like you keep on trying to throw out there. Come on down <laughs> because we need some more woke people. To the real um, HM. Oh, you all were talking about therapy. There's a podcast called Therapy for Black Girls. I really wish that, 
I don't know if you listen to it, but that is so therapeutic mm. as far as like therapy. And you were talking about having a black therapist, um, I think in the last episode and um, the doctor, I cannot remember her name. She is in charge. She's based out of Atlanta, but she has a whole website. Um, and she gives every single black, well, not, not every single black therapist, in your state or around you, but she has a whole listing on mm, her website. Like a directory. Therapy. Nice. So I do agree with the whole therapy thing. Like, that is so That's real. needed for so many people. People don't even think that they need it, but they really do. Mm-hmm. You need somebody to talk to. Absolutely. And I just want you all to keep up the great work. I continue to listen to you all. When Niram went out of town, I was, like, dying because I had nothing else to listen to. <laughs> but it is okay. The L Taker is at a standstill right now, so I'm doing pretty good. Good. But keep up the good work, and I love you all. I love you too. We love Thank you too. Yes, absolutely. I'll let you soon, sis. Yeah, yeah I know. DC one. keep pulling me. We have also have, you know, of course we got Nia down there, but we also got a really other a good friend who recently moved down there too, yeah. Nadifa. So I, I do feel the energy's pulling me. Good morning, Nero and Nayami. Good morning. Good morning. From Ohio. Um, I just finished this week's Wednesday's episode. And, um, you know, I wanted to say, and I always say encourage, you know, nothing lasts forever. You're going to get through this. Mm-hmm. Feel how you got to feel and move through it. Just don't sit there. Um, also, that little boy, what's his name? Keaton? Um, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, he was getting bullied. He was calling kids niggas. See, near me was right. So, you was I right. I seen it on my timeline, like, all day. I knew someone was about to do story. You know, looking at it, because, you know, you got to. I be looking for the racism, you know. It's exactly. <laughs> Come so on. I was just like peeping it out. And I'm like, no, it's something with this shit. It ain't right, right? And then like a couple hours later, that's when all this shit started coming out about his mom being racist. And then the reason why he was getting bullied was just because he was calling black students niggers. Gotcha. Um, Got it. Came out on a podcast that I was listening to. Got it. But, you know, people are so quick to jump on this bandwagon of, uh, without doing our research, we got to check in the shit. And like you were saying, we have plenty of black and brown girls who are, hell, being sold in the Come sex on. trafficking or yep. uh, just looking at what's going on in uh, Liberia. And yeah. then you have uh, black kids who are committing suicide. And that's right somebody here. who was bullied myself. It was just like, you know, I know how that feel. And, I, and you know, it's, it's a hard thing to go through as a kid. Mm-hmm. And as a mom, yeah. what I tell my kids, uh, what I tell my daughter anyway, you know, always stick up for yourself. Mm-hmm. You don't let don't let shit slide. If you feel disrespected, you let it be known. And whatever happens after that, I'll you know, it, yeah. let me know. You don't never start no shit, but you don't never let nobody disrespect you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, we got keywords of what's all automatic ass whooping for somebody, or you know, was just like let me put you in your place. Yep. But um, yeah. So good luck. I love the podcast, y'all. Oh. I'm still just lost. Her. But yeah, I got the gist of it. I knew something was going on with that Keaton too. I, you know, I just think, because, you know, I was all in my Nyambi feeling, so I didn't want to go too much off on that white boy, right? Mm. But something just didn't feel right about the situation, right? right. I was like, they just came and whooped your ass just because of your nose? <laughs> nah, it's something more to this story, right? You know what I'm saying? It's something a little more to that story. That's why I put the slant on it. Like, you know, it was a lot of bullying happening. We need to be aware, right? You know what I'm saying? But I'm right with you, sis. You got to always look for the racism and the bullshit because they don't give no slack on our children, right? All bullying I- matters. Stop. <laughs> um, but again, I just want to thank y'all so much for your support. Like, I've gotten so much support, and y'all don't have no idea how much you've helped me get through this. Like, I'm already feeling lighter and moving forward and being more productive. So, just thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Just being there and your words of encouragement have meant so much to me. Um, Niram, you got anything else before we close out for this Friday? Yeah, I was going through the Twitter stream. Mm-hmm. Y'all niggas want March, huh? Niram's not even a creative. See, then he's going to add, this is my project. My hobby cannot be creating merchandise. No, I'm going to create some merch. Okay. Yeah, I'm the one that created the logo and the website. Uh, all right. I got y'all niggas. I'm going to figure out some keychains and some t-shirts, y'all. I can't guarantee shit you for Christmas. Detroit out the nigga. I can't guarantee shit for Christmas. Yeah. 
But we might have something for New Year. Merchandise is cute, but I, you know, I want to do something a little more substantial. Like I really want to do like that Black Love Matters coffee table book, yeah, right? We, that's full of that. love stories. Like mm-hmm. that's the type of stuff I want to kind of put my heart and soul into and give some like, that folks really, you know, appreciating and yeah. using as tangible. I get it, baby. But niggas want t-shirts too. Okay, all righty. To Look, submit your Black Love stuff. Like I want t-shirts, a long sleeve tee, lanyards, car detail. <laughs> Did dark, you type that no, in? Oh, car, okay. de- car decals. Car decals. Not car decals. And then she put things. Things. I need things. Things. <laughs> things. So that they I niggas want y'all. merch. I love y'all. Y'all, thank Look, you so much. I would like a nice t shirt. Create, create that pre- Patreon link. I got you, fam. <laughs> yeah, silly. All right. Come on. Come on. Folks got to wrap up their Friday. I hope y'all have a great Friday. We were about one week from the holiday season. So I hope y'all, y'all, cubicle warriors, y'all wrapping stuff up um, so you can get a little bit of time with the family when you're with your family. I think next week we're going to talk about surviving Christmas with your families. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Nia will be in contact. Kwanzaa's coming up too, y'all. So stay tuned for what we're going to do. So to submit your Black Love stories, go to blacklovematters.com. Um, and to submit your questions for Kitchen Table Talk, you can shoot us an uh, email at blacklovematters at gmail.com. That's Black Love Matters with no K. And to leave us a comment about anything we've discussed today, you can do that on our um, blog, SoundCloud, Stitcher, any form of social media. Our handles is Black Love Matters. Again, that's Black Love Matters with no K. Or you can leave us a voicemail at 508 784 1111. That's 508-784-1111. Talk to y'all later. And remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace. Have a good weekend. Told you niggas want the merch. Come on, come on here. Come on, come on, come on. All right, y'all. Talk People to y'all gotta later. Buy the kids Elmo's and shit. Okay. So this is the after show. No, I'm not doing the after show. I tried to get y'all niggas more content, but we'll holler at y'all later. Damn.